Hello, welcome to your academy. At your academy today, uh, we'll deal with a poem by Sylvia Plath titled as Daddy. Daddy is one of the most anthologized, one of the most read, appreciated, and most famous poem by Sylvia Plath. In this, in this lecture, we will only deal with uh, Daddy to know about Sylvia Plath, who was Sylvia Plath, what was her contribution to English literature? You can refer to a lecture on uh, introduction to Sylvia Plath uh, about Sylvia Plath. The link of that lecture appears at the top of this video. In case you have watched that lecture, you can continue with uh, our lecture on Daddy by Sylvia Plath. Sylvia Plath, to say just few things so that we can, you know, make up the context of this poem, was a confessional poet uh, from America. She died by committing suicide when she was hardly 31, 32 years of age. She was married to Ted Hughes. Her married life and her personal life actually was uh, not a smooth one. Uh, the experiences of her life uh, somewhat forced her to commit suicide. And this particular poem with which we will be dealing today uh, was written only uh, three or four months before her death and one month after her separation from Ted Hughes, who was her husband. Uh, regarding her personal life, we can refer to the lecture about uh, Sylvia Plath. But this particular poem, Daddy, uh, which is considered, as I said earlier, it was written only, you know, four, uh, three or four months before her death uh, in October 1962. And this particular poem is the most aggressive and also considered as a violent poem by Sylvia Plath. Or uh, you can say that this is a poem which, uh, you know, in, in which Sylvia Plath would be venting out her anger. Her unconscious mind would come out and she would express everything related to her father and related to her husband in this particular poem. Rather, this poem would be the representation of the state of depression of Sylvia Plath. Some of uh, the critics consider this poem as very violent in nature, but whatever the case be, there are critics who say that this is a poem which comes up with most clarity about the life of Sylvia Plath. Though the tune of this poem is very aggressive, the style of this poem is very aggressive, which you will obviously understand when we will go through the text of the poem, that how much uh, aggression there is in the attitude of the poet when she is writing this particular poem. But when she was writing this poem, the uh, real life circumstances of Sylvia Plath weren't good at all. As I said earlier, that it was only a month after she got divorced from Ted Hughes or separated from Ted Hughes. And you must uh, know that when Sylvia Plath met Ted Hughes in Cambridge University, she stated in one of her letters that uh, he, uh, that she looks perfect with Ted Hughes, or Ted Hughes and her, hers is the best couple, but eventually it turned out that it was not like that. And that shock uh, from a state where she thought that Ted Hughes was perhaps the best person with which Sylvia Plath could have got married, and that ended to be the worst relationship. Uh, and this particular poem would, you know, uh, generalize the image of man in uh, the life of Sylvia Plath. And also, uh, her various attempts of committing suicide would also be a theme or subject matter of this poem called Ten. As I said earlier, that this poem is violent in nature. Many critics see this poem not merely as a violent poem, not merely as an expression of one's inner feeling, but they say that this is psychoanalytic in nature. This is the poem of a person who has faced depression or is in a state of depression and uh, he or she does not have you know sufficient means to express herself so this poem 
becomes a mode or a process of expressing one's feelings and thoughts. So this poem is also looked as a psychoanalytic poem. This poem is also considered as an autobiographical poem or a confessional poem because in this particular poem, Sylvia Plath would be confessing a lot many things and would be telling the readers about her real life. Sylvia Plath, when uh, read this particular poem, Daddy, on BBC, she stated about this poem and I quote, here is a poem spoken by a girl with an Electra complex. Her father died while she thought he was gone. Her case is complicated by the fact that her father was also a Nazi and her mother very possibly part Jewish. In the daughter, the two strains marry and paralyze each other. She has to act out the awful little allegory once over before she is free of it. Now, this is uh, what Sylvia Plath thought about this poem. And she said that it was about Electra complex. And this Electra complex and Oedipus complex, you know, are introduced by Sigmund Freud through her psychoanalytic, psychoanalytic theory and approach, wherein he says that in Oedipus complex, uh, male child is more attracted towards her mother. And in Electra complex, the female child is more attracted towards her father. And this is the case of Sylvia Plath also, wherein, you know, she is more attracted towards. Uh, her father and she states here that she considered him as God but he died at a very young age as you know if you have seen our lecture on about Sylvia Plath that her father died when she was only eight years of age and since she had an attraction towards her father and her father died at a very young age that was also you know uh, something uh, in, in the unconscious mind of uh, you know, uh, Alec, uh, of Sylvia Plath, which we call as unfulfilled wish or desire to see her godlike father. And eventually, she, when she comes across Ted Hughes, she feels that all men would be same. Perhaps his father was also same. And as we are reading this poem, you need to keep in mind that it will uh, give a lot of references to uh, the Nazi uh, party of Germany during the uh, First and Second World War and uh, the treatment that these Nazis and fascists did to the Jews back then would also be not a subject matter of this poem but there would be images that would be created by Sylvia Plath in order to make reader understand uh, her or her situation better. Now, if you know the context of First World War, Second World War, of concentration camps of Jews or the treatment of Jews by Hitler and Mussolini, you will find that Sylvia Plath in this poem would be siding herself with the Jews and, you know, uh, her father and others as the Nazis or as the fascists, you know, who have been treating their little daughter as Jew are putting her in concentration camps and treating her as bad. Now, this uh, was the context to this particular poem. You will have to keep these few uh, points or these few elements in your mind as you read this particular poem. And the most important aspect of this poem is its aggressive tune, is its violent tune. And this aggressiveness needs to be taken in consideration. When you read this poem, read this poem in an aggressive manner so that you know you understand in the in the same tune in which Sylvia Plath has written it. If you do that, it will uh, you know obviously help you to a great extent in understanding the feelings, not only the feelings of the poet, but also the meaning of this poem. That was about the introduction of this poem and now we will be reading the text of this poem. After going through the text of this poem, we'll uh, make a line by line analysis of this poem. So first up, let's take the text of the poem. That you do not do, you do not do any more black shoe in which I have lived like a fool for 30 years poor and white, barely daring to breathe and accrue. Daddy! I have had to kill you. You died before I had time. 
marble heavy, a bag full of God, ghastly statue with one great toe big as a frisco seal and a head in the freakish Atlantic where it pours green over blue. In that, in the waters of beautiful Norset, I used to pray to recover you, but you too. In the German tongue, in the Polish tongue, Polish tone, scrapped flat by the ruler of the wars, 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 but the name of the town is common, my Polak friend says there are a dozen or two. So, I never could tell where you put your foot, your, your root. I never could talk to you. The tongue stuck in my jaw. It stuck in a barbed wire snare. Itch, 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 itch. I could hardly speak. I thought every German was you. And the language obscene. An engine, an engine. Shuffing me off like a Jew. Uh, like a Jew. A Jew of Dachau. Auschwitz. Balsen. I begin to talk like a Jew. I think. I may well be a Jew. The snows of Tyrol, the clear beer of Vienna are not very pure or true with my gypsy ancestress and my weird luck and my tarot pack and my tarot pack I may be a bit of a Jew. I have always been scared of you with your loaf to waff, your gubble tigo, and your neat moustache and your Aryan eye, bright blue panzer man, panzer man, oh you. Not God, but a swastika. So black, no sky could sweep through. Every woman adores a fast. The boot in the face, the brute, brute heart of a brute man like you. You stand at the blackboard, Daddy, in the picture I have A cleft in your chin instead of your foot. But no less a devil for that. No, not any less the black man who bit my pretty red heart in two. I was ten when they buried you. At twenty I tried to die and get back, back, back to you. I thought even the booms would do. But they pulled me out of the sand. And they stuck me together with glue. And then I knew what to do. I made a model of you. A man in black with a mind camp look. And a low of the rack and the screw. And I said, I do, I do. So daddy, I am finally true. The black telephone's off at the root. The voice just can't warm through. If I have killed one man, I have killed two. The vampire who said he was you and drank my blood for a year, seven years if you want to know. Daddy, you can lie back now. There's a stake in your fat black heart and the villagers never liked you. They are dancing on the stamps on you. They always knew it was you. Daddy, daddy, you bastard, I am true. That was the text of the poem Daddy and obviously as I said it is violent, aggressive in tone so I try to read it in the same manner and this is a long poem so we won't be putting the whole lecture in one video there would be different parts and this part that is all uh, you can watch the next part of this video that is all in this part to watch the next part of this lecture click on the end screen that has popped up on this side of the video and you can click here to subscribe your academy.